Hey hockey players, in this episode of DePraw Power Skating, we're gonna be talking about how to build your very first youth hockey team. Coming up next. Hey everybody, Coach Ryan here with DePraw Power Skating. And after you've been in the game as long as I have, it's inevitable that the circle of life finally returns and comes back around full circle on you. I had a former player reach out and say, hey coach, I'm coaching my very first youth hockey team. Can you give me some advice and can you give me some tips? Well, number one, it didn't make me feel any younger, but number two, I was honored to help him out. So maybe this is your first time or second or third time coaching a youth hockey team and you could use some pointers and tips to help build that team to reach its full potential. So I'm gonna take you over here to the board now, but I'm not gonna show you a drill. The very first tip that I wanna share with you was shared with me, and it was from a former D1 college hockey coach. Now this rule is known by many names. It can be called, it can be called the circle of greatness. A better name yet would be the team circle of influence. So I'm gonna use my green marker here so it shows up. If you can just imagine a big giant circle here, when you are building this team, you wanna build your core, right? You wanna build your core group of parents with alike philosophies and ideals. Your goals are the same, very like-minded. The way you approach hockey is the same. Are you making sure that the kids are getting all their fundamentals as well as having fun? That core group is what you're gonna build everything off of, the team dynamic the family dynamic with the parents on the team and everybody on the team really with the the coaching staff you want to make sure that your core group falls within this circle so first within the big circle you want to draw an even smaller circle and this represents your core group the strength that everything else will be built on so let's say within this core group you have one two three four five, six, seven players. And then just outside of reach of your main group, you have another five or six, right? So you have everybody that buys in, they love being there, they wanna put in the work, they wanna get better on their fund fundamentals. The goals are similar. They're willing to run through a brick wall for you. They, they have a great attitude. They get along with everybody on the team and they raise people up, right? Whether they're having a bad day, a, a bad practice, or the outcome of the game isn't going your way. And this is the group that holds everything together, the glue, and raises everything up. It could also be the level of play this is the heart and soul of the team. Now, just outside of that, what they're gonna try to do and what you're gonna try to accomplish with your coaching staff, with parents and everybody, is make sure that you pull all of these outliers that are just barely outside the group in. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they're bad apples or they have a bad attitude, right? They are just not as enthusiastic is the core. Maybe they're a little bit shy, maybe they're a little bit standoffish, maybe um, they're so new to hockey, they're still trying to process, and you're just gonna have everybody and the whole team dynamic pull them in, right? Now, with all this being said, here's one big red flag and I've been burned by this many times and this is what I told my former player if you go for the talent and taking that player that lights the lamp but still plays a team game but the minute you take a player that has a bad attitude a great amount of talent lights the lamp doesn't think about the rest of the team now you've got a disease within the team and it will haunt you the rest of the season I know I've had to kick several off of my teams throughout the years. Okay, coach, so 
what do you want? You're looking for that talent that still has a good attitude, but just hasn't really bought into the core group and the team play, but you know they're not that far out, right? So you might have a couple superstars just outside of this second loop or circle. So what you want to do as you're building this team is you want to make sure that their influence isn't stronger than the influence here. And this will also include your coaching staff and parents. And if you make this influence so great and you build this team the right way with positive intentions, building hockey the right way, like I said, with fundamentals, family, building teamwork and camaraderie, they will not want to stay out here. They will automatically want to jump in, right? And that process can take weeks. It could take months. You just want to make sure that somebody doesn't stay outside of the circle and start trying to pull players to how they're thinking. You want to build this the right way, give yourself a great foundation, Coach, how much should I skate them? And I had a laugh and I was like, you know what my answer is going to be. If you ever have a lack of time, right, or you're trying to decide between several different skills, always, always err on the side of too much skating because there is no such thing as too much skating. Rule number one, work on their skating. Rule number two, work on their skating. Rule number three, work on their skating. Too many times that I've had conversations with coaches and parents that have gone to tournaments and showcases only to find out that their team's ability and level of hockey wasn't quite up to par with some of the other team. And the answer never comes back. Their stick handling was lacking. Their shooting was off. It always comes back to coach, we got out skated. And then I'll always take a deeper dive to make sure that I understand and say, are we talking team effort or are we talking skating ability? And they'll always answer the skating ability. You see, it's one thing to play a team that has a couple speedsters that can fly around the ice and are dynamic skaters, but it's something totally different to be out skated by a team of dynamic skaters. So we had a long conversation and it was fun catching up, but at the end of the day, don't ever be afraid to skate and give them the basics and make sure that they have those fundamentals to build on moving forward. Well, that's it for this episode of Pro Power Skating. I'll be adding more videos to this series, How to Coach Your First Youth Hockey Team. I sure hope you have a great season. And as always, I hope you have a great one. We'll see you next time.